You're listening to the Go Get Them Show. This is a discussion that inspires entrepreneurs to pursue their passion to create meaningful, impactful, and sustainable companies in Asia, Africa, and Latam. This is your host, Max and T, together with my co-hosts, Arun Krishnakumar and Sheila Amburu. We sit down with entrepreneurs, operators, and investors across frontier markets to discover their experiences, lessons learned, and how they made an impact. So, <laughs> keeps changing day to day. But um, so my main role is, is to lead uh, the, the uh, digital infrastructure and solutions portfolio. For me personally, because I was usually on the other side of the table, allocating capital, not on this side of the table, looking to seek capital and bring on new partners. For, the- for this episode, we have UC. UC Ahonen is the head of digital infrastructure and solutions at FinFund a leading impact investing firm in 53 developing countries across multiple sectors, renewable energy, sustainable forestry, uh, digital infrastructure, financial institution, etc. And they have what a fantastic portfolio that includes Jumo, Anapura, Sarasa, Panda Health, Sanergy, and more. He has 10 plus years of experience uh, living and working in emerging markets. And before that, he is uh, six years of fantastic career at FinFund, UC spent um, a couple of years as a corporate finance advisor at Ernst Young, one of the big four accounting firm and advisory firms. He was also an analyst at Standard Bank, of which he worked on multiple investment banking assignments that focuses on emerging markets. UC graduated the University of Durham with Master of Arts in Financial Management, as well as Master's Degree in Finance. Welcome to the podcast, UC. Thank you very much, Max. And thanks, Aaron. Pleasure to be here. Cool. We're, we're very happy to... Got you. I guess the first question I have is, you know, a lot of people look at your title and want to understand, you know, what exactly, you know, entails with Head of Digital Infrastructure and Solutions. So do you mind, you know, explaining a little bit to us and our audience and what exactly do you do? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> it's changing day to day. But um, so my main role is, is to lead uh, the the. Uh, digital infrastructure and solutions portfolio at FinFund. Uh, it's a newly established team this year, and and we are growing the portfolio. So much of my my day to day work goes on the origination side and and efforts of growing the portfolio with with new, impactful and and exciting investments in in Africa and Asia. Cool. And I guess my, my follow up question is: You mentioned a little bit about scouting, looking out for portfolio companies, right? Where where are you? looking at and how are you getting those sources of of um of companies if you will yeah um that's that's a main part of the work is is really trying to find these these great companies and and of course we need to have uh, certain priorities and and, and country-wise um sub-saharan africa is clearly our our main market so that's mm-hmm. about 60 percent of our our investments annually go go to it in these markets but Clearly, Southeast Asia is 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 important and and in interesting market, especially countries like Indonesia, Vietnam. Those are the kind of jurisdictions, environments where we see that we can add value and, and find interesting and innovative companies. Thanks, Yuzi. Um, so, just double clicking into the investment focus as well. You touched upon the regional focus. Uh, what would also help us in terms of um sectoral focus uh what what you find is interesting and what excites you personally about uh about being part of this impact ecosystem or impact investing ecosystem yeah it's an um, exciting exciting work thanks thanks Aaron, for this question i um maybe if I, I i tackle tackle the industry question first so what we thought that it's important in in, in as an impact investor is is that get access to data and, and that has clearly uh development impacts you know whether whether we invest in in, in the backhaul uh, more infrastructure type of investments or if we invest to the, the, the actual fun stuff that um excites me personally is, is on the solution so what can you do with the data can you make things more efficient in, in financing in the financial sector, for example, fintech is this one good example. E-commerce, um, e-mobility, whatever you can use the data to make people's lives better interests us. But of course, that requires investments in in in, in the infrastructure side, and and that's why we combine this fairly wide. Uh, we do recognize it's a wide wide uh, 
sector scope, but, but we feel that the data is, is the underlying element there, and that's what we want to achieve. Cool. So I guess I have a um, follow-up question, I guess, on, on the data side. Um, you obviously invested a lot on infrastructure to make sure those data, you'll be able to elevate it and to do something good of it. Do you have, I guess, any specific examples within your portfolio companies that's doing very well at this? Um, I think a lot of our listeners could actually learn from them, right? So what are the key things to look out for, especially, you know, whether or not infrastructure readiness is there? Maybe it's something to think about uh, or whether or not, you know, they can, what are the best ways to, you know, collect, store or even manipulate those data? So happy to hear your thoughts. Yeah, maybe on, on, on data, I, 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 I think you touched on on very exciting topic but it's also also a really broad topic so mm -hmm. so if we if we start how we utilize that data to make people lives better i think great great example is, is our portfolio company jumo uh, mm -hmm. which is the pan-african fintech platform and and what they use they use the big data uh, to to uh, allow people to get get into financial services uh, and, and and access to those who didn't have that access before so and, and that's all achieved through through analyzing the big data, and and, and mm -hmm. I think that's a great example because you know uh, data shows that you know they've been able to reach uh, uh, those who, who weren't reached before. And actually, when we digged a little bit deeper and, and understood you know what what have been done with with, with that those services, um, those have actually made the lives better for 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 many many of who got that access. So. There is actually real impact on 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 data if if you use it wisely. Of course, have to say that's a dangerous um, animal as well. You can you can misuse it. And you can have it in the wrong wrong purposes. But that's one of our our roles as impact investor to ensure that our investee companies go to the right direction and and we have to support them in in in, in that journey to to make make people lives better, but also grow as a business and, and add value to investors. Interesting. So uh, just focusing on the African continent itself, you see, uh, you've been pretty close to the continent for several years now, um, be it through your time at Standard Bank or now um, as, as a board member of Jumo. And uh, of course, uh, we understand FinFund is very focused on Africa as, 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 a, as a destination for funding. Um, I, we uh i noticed that you've, you've recently closed an investment there with uh, bcs group the telecoms firm um so how do you see last mile connectivity transforming people's lives there because i personally have seen that in india where as soon as for instance reliance geo kind of became a major player there uh people got access to internet very easily even the rural areas of of the country got access to uh, the internet which means information flows just happened and uh, uh, recently i i, I heard um, a stat which is about 70 percent of india access youtube through native voice search which is people actually talk to youtube to look at uh, what they want so things like that it is just amazing to see how people use the internet for information or entertainment uh, how do you see the, the transformation happening in Africa, particularly? What excites you about that space from a telecoms and connectivity perspective, last mile connectivity? Yeah, definitely. That's a um, great question and great topic. And, 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 and maybe just to start with, that has become even more important recently. I think studies show that during the COVID, uh, the demand for, for data has grown more than 20%, uh, just organically. And then you, when you take some really under certain markets, like uh, some East African countries where BCS operates, uh, for example, the DRC, um, they have the most expensive data in, 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 in anywhere in the world. And, and, and you, if you translate that one to, say, average US consumer, that would be equivalent that you pay, say, 500 bucks per month of your data. And, and, and we all understand that that is not possible nor, nor, nor sustainable. So getting first those investments in, in, into that infra that can make that data cheaper, better quality, and, 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 and that through more accessible is a key to any, any development. So if you can, can have that infrastructure, then you can access the data. And I think the second part is that how you access that data. I, I, like like in, 
India uh, and, and many other emerging markets that ha happens through your mobile phone, right? So it's it's not not no longer the the wi fis to your home laptop or or iPod. It, it, it's these devices that are already accessible. You know, the, the price of of, of smartphone has gone down to 50 bucks in in some some countries and and that is the key element why now is is right right time to invest in the sector because now you can reach the, those who who went what you weren't able able to reach it and, and if you don't have the devices to use the data I, I don't think it makes sense to invest to to last mile nor nor back all uh, even so, but I think now now it definitely makes sense. And 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 once you have that access, you can you can achieve so many things things with the data and data. So so I, I think that's really clear in our mind, at least you know that we want want to continue these investments in these sectors. Cool. Thank you so much. And uh, we we mentioned two, I guess, very different businesses, right? You, you we talk a little bit about Jumo, which is basically utilizing data with software, and then we talk a little bit about. Uh, telecoms company, which is a little bit more physical infrastructure. And I guess my, my question to you is, um, number one, how do you assess this types of different companies? Because they're two very different companies, but they're within the portfolio. How do you assess them? Does your approach actually changes? And number two, like what are some of the key challenges when it comes to sourcing these companies? Because fundamentally, your, your, your mandate is also quite wide. Um, so we'd love to hear your thoughts, right? Maybe we start to take things in turn. Let's start with how do you assess them um, from a you know, um, evaluation perspective. That's very, very um, hard job to assess them. <laughs> I, I, there are so many, many good companies, so many good entrepreneurs, yeah. but but you can only only make so many investments, and 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 uh, the the number of deals we assess every year is is really high, and then we end up doing the frank fraction of it, and and it's part of the process that we need to go through as 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 investors. So of course you need to get to know industry, the sector, the the market, and and that can take time. Sometimes we have prior experience. We have number of investments in 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 in, in separate countries in, in in the industries we are confident with. But it still doesn't doesn't um, mean that we don't have to do our homework well. So we need to go there in the market. We need to speak with the industry players, uh, regulators, um, uh, analyze the competitors, but most importantly, analyze the people in the company. So you know um, you can have a great product you can have a great industry but if you don't have right people to deliver that strategy um to my mind the investment won't, won't make sense so we want to get to know that you know it's, it's run by great people who have clear vision what they want to do and and this vision is hopefully aligned with our our goals and, and that's how we can 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 reach the common understanding for 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 future because we are long-term investment investor mm -hmm. uh, we are we are not there for for quick quick wins or, or or anything like that so we need to really get get ourselves confident that you know this is the right right mix to to stick, stick in for a long time thanks you see i would like to touch upon one other uh, initiative which is of course as we know is not just uh, a fin fund based initiative it is much more globally um, uh, driven the 2x challenge as we as we say in the de development finance world uh, can you talk to our audience about it because um, i think that's pretty critical uh, to the world that we are moving into uh, it is of course about gender equality and we would love to hear what fin fund is doing in this space yeah it's um, important topic and and and, and it, it's it's a challenge that was founded by the efis um um so 2017 2018 it started and and and, and until 2020 it raised 7 billion and since then the targets have increased massively and and now the aim among the efis is to utilize utilize further 15 billion over the next two years in 2x so what it means in practice and, 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 and from our point of view is that we do analyze every single investment point of view of, of, of 2x uh, gender criteria. So that would include uh, uh, females in, in the board, female ownership, uh, female employees, uh, what are the ways to improve to, to share of uh, women in, 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 in the companies and, and, and their role and, and pay and everything. So that's part of our process and it's integrated on in all, all levels. So each and every uh, opportunity we assess, we, we always assess, assess against the gender 2x criteria and, and then see what we can do and, and, and whether we have an investment that meets those standards. 
it doesn't always mean that you know a company has to be ready it doesn't need to be already gender inclusive business great if if it can be uh, if you can find products i think fintech is one great example where you can actually you know reach reach uh, uh, females better than 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 before but you know if it's something that company is willing to work towards and if it's something that we can help with it's always positive but that's that's it deeply integrated in in our processes and all of our investments. Cool. I have a question just to follow up on that. And I I think we're all quite passionate about, you know, um, equality per se, right? And my question to you is, um, for the benefit, I guess, for for the benefit of myself and my audiences, is what are people not doing that is helping, that would help gender equality? So basically, what are the problems that you're seeing that um, startup haven't yet get their heads around it. Like, what are the problems and what are the key things that, or I would say, how do I rephrase this? Is opportunity, right? If there's an opportunity for people to do more to improve gender equality. To my mind, you know, especially for startup, you know, you might have a lot of day-to-day problems and, and challenges you need need to solve and, and you simply might not be focusing on, on, on this area. So it's, you know, it's not, something that you know we, we are blaming anyone not doing that and, and it's completely natural that you know you might focus on some some issues but it is truly true that you know it's helpful that you know if you can recognize few areas that where you can make the small small change I and mean, it's it's you know simply you know how i can make uh, my recruitment process uh, more attractive for females and we we recognize that for example in in, in many of the tech driven startups you know we have to I admit that it's not um, always, always the pool is not 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 you know female dominated you know you you know the engineers and us three speaking here as well we are all males and and, and it's you know something that we need to recognize that is there anything we can do about that you know um, can we make these companies more attractive uh, to female candidates or is there um, any ways I can improve my services? That, you know, it, it would be more accessible, for example, uh, females in, in, in rural markets. Those are all business opportunities as well, you know, and, and that, that can help. But I, I do recognize that that's probably not something you think in the first instance when you set up your business, when you try to get your uh, p ls in, in the shape that you get the next investment round. But earlier you start, um, more it will benefit you, of course. Uh, that that's great. Uh, you see, I mean, one one other topic that I really wanted to discuss with you today was more around the climate angle. Um, and um, when we, because we work a lot with a lot of other DFIs as well, we often find a, a mixed approach towards solving the energy uh, or, or climate problem. Uh, they're not the same, but uh, oh, there's there's a lot of overlaps there. Um, Often we find several DFIs focused on um, energy creation. Uh, mm-hmm. But in the case of Infund, one thing I've realized is, uh, is that you not only focus on energy creation, but also focus on um, sustainable energy usage, uh, um, sustainable mobility, for instance. And that kind of uh, is, is a lot more kind of options for, for the energy team to go after. So can you tell us a little bit more about how you're going about it? Uh, what I mean, what your ambitions are in the energy stroke climate space? Yeah, I have to say that our ambitions are really high. So um, we, we made a new statement on our climate and energy um, in the summer and, and, and we are fully fully committed to the objectives of, of the Paris Agreement. And, 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 and that means that we are looking at our, our investments from the environmental perspective all the time so so um, of course our, our portfolio if we look at the portfolio level it's, it's in a pretty good shape because we have such a large portion of forestry uh, um, investments but of course we we recognize that we can do more and, and we are looking both you know adaptation as well uh, aspects but, but if, if going in the practical terms and, and in in this sector I'm, I'm looking after is is i think technology can mitigate many of the environmental uh, issues uh, uh, really really well so um, for example we have invest, invested to telecom esco energy service company called itp power whose business model is to replace uh, diesel generators uh, from the telecom towers uh, with the solar hybrid solutions and that has really clear 
you know, environmental effects, or if you can, even with mo- mobile technology, you know, you can sometimes, you know, reduce to, to the use of cars or travel or, or make simply things more efficient. Those have all impacts to the energy cost. It's also the business mindset in many, especially now I'm talking about Africa and rural Africa, you know, there's no access to energy, but you need to solve that problem somehow. And if you can have wise renewable energy solutions, it makes the, the business sense as well. And, and that's very natural space for us to invest. And, and, and through that, we can achieve our, 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 our climate targets as well. Thank you for that, you see. Um, Max, any other questions from you? Yeah, of course. Um, I'd love to learn a little bit more about the you know energy access point. So I guess my, my, my two cents around this is because, you know, having sit in most of my life in the developed market um, and really don't understand the problem on the ground. So I would love to hear your thoughts around how do you elevate some of the problems so that more entrepreneurs will get, you know, get their hands around solving that problem. Um, I guess this is more of an information access perspective, right? Because if people don't understand the problem, don't know the problem, they wouldn't create the solution to, to solve that. So I'd love to hear your thoughts, you know, how are we, how can we do more to democratize information as such so that we bring these uh, problems to life and people will go in and solve it at the very least, give it a try. I, I, I think, you know, it's probably not, not a matter of, of not recognizing the problem, in my point of view, and, 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 and not being able to do, I, I guess it, it, it all, all starts from, from having right resources and, and know how mm-hmm. to you did the right right thing. And of course, you know, there are two ways in my point of view to, to influence that. And one one the better way is to support that, you know, they have the right financing tools and, and encourage um, companies and, 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 and businesses to to work in in, 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 in environmental and energy efficient ways. So so you can of course structure uh, elements in your financing to support that one. Of course you can demand well as a financier, but I think the better way is to work together and, and trying to find a find a solution how, how, how you can do that. I think you know it's access to energy is one thing, but also access to reliable energy is is, is, is really important and, and, and that that's something we, we see that the data center investments in Africa are, are lacking uh, clearly the scale of, of, of any other markets. And, and uh, I guess one, one key element is that, you know, there is no reliable uh, source of energy or power. So that has to be solved before you can, you can build these uh, centers in, in the scale that is needed. And, and this all comes through, it's a bit of chicken and egg, of course, you know, when, comes first and who provides the investment but of course our role is, is to to support that and, and try to find investments and, and and that's what we committed to our our fund has committed that to, we invest uh, one billion to energy efficient solutions by by 2030 and, and and this is this is a clear target for us so we need to find, find solutions i mean when we talk about energy and uh, uh investing investment investing into energy it's very hard to look beyond sub-Saharan Africa because uh, there's so much opportunities there, particularly off the grid solutions that are showing up. And uh, I'm I'm specifically seeing several interesting business models that integrates energy and financial inclusion, for instance. Um, it's it's amazing the kind of business models and solutions that startups are putting together to address the off the off the grid uh, energy market in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, on that note, one final question uh, you see. If there is an entrepreneur, social entrepreneur out there who wants to reach out to you, what is the best way to reach out to you? Well, my contact details is, is in, in my website or, or LinkedIn, or, or please free to contact me. I'm, I'm always, always, you know, uh, happy, happy to discuss. But, you know, I guess the best way, what, what, what you really mean is that um, how to attract uh, our, our financing. Absolutely, and, yeah. And, and that's, that's, of course, you know, uh, second, second, second story. That's hard to give you straight answer because you know it always depends on on the matters we we discussed before. But you know clearly, if you have a vision, if you have existing business, so so our our profile. Unfortunately, we are not venture capital. We are not seed level investors, but we are the scale level in, investors. So if you have you existing business that is that is impactful, and you wanna wanna scale it scale it in Africa, I think that's that's when we can 
have, have that discussion and hopefully find a, find a solution. On that note, thank you so much for your time, UC. It was a pleasure talking to you and uh, thanks for sharing all the wonderful information. Thank you, thanks, Sarah. Thanks, thanks, Max and me. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers.